Dus namens uh, de programmacommissie de aankondigingen van Mark Lohman. Mark is uh, al heel al jaren bekend, denk ik, uh, vanwege zijn Hitman Pro. Eerst een tooltje om malware te verwijderen op besmette pc's. Als een soort uh, ja, lave, laatste redmiddel van mensen die allerlei Windows problemen hadden. Hij is later uh, is hij met Hitman Pro Alert uh, begonnen om echt actief te kunnen gaan uh, beschermen. He, dus als, als het programma dat allerlei files worden geweigerd, dan uh, blokkeert hij dat. Met, met allerlei geavanceerde technieken, technieken en tricks, trucs. Inmiddels is Hitman Pro onderdeel van uh, Sophos geworden. En is Mark daar uh, engineering director. En hij ziet heel veel in het veld wat er allemaal zo aan cryptolokken gebeurt over de hele wereld. We kennen natuurlijk in Nederland, is denk ik de Maastricht cryptolokker incident, is wel de meest bekende denk ik. Uh, maar er worden diverse bedrijven worden gekaapt en meestal lees je daar niks over in de krant. Ja, Brian Krebs die kon gisteravond eraan een waarschuwing dat er wel 400 uh, Amerikaanse ziekenhuizen potentieel gecryptolokt zullen gaan worden door een uh, Russische bende. Nou, dat is een van de, de, de dingen die Mark ook al volgde, begreep ik. Dus ik ben heel erg benieuwd wat hij uh, kan vertellen over alle trends en bedreigingen internationaal. Mark, fijn dat je hierbij bent en dat je uh, deze presentatie komt geven. Ja, dankjewel Rogier. Um, yeah, as mentioned, I'm going to do this presentation in English. And uh, as you see, the, 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 the title of this presentation is Surviving the Ransomware Pandemic. And especially uh, now with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, ransomware activities. And um, a lot of, lot of them uh, you don't read about in the, in the papers or, or online. Um, doesn't, that doesn't mean that, uh, that it's, it's quiet. Uh, on the contrary, it's very, very busy at the moment in, uh, in the ransomware landscape, so to speak. So, and in this presentation, I'm uh, going to take you uh, on a tour um, uh, from what our products see on uh, uh, tens of millions of endpoints that uh, where we have our uh, technology installed. Uh, the, the, the product is called Intercept X, but one of the core components is our uh, Hitman Pro Alert that we built in uh, Twente in the Netherlands. And, uh, The primary feature of the Intercept X product is uh, is basically um, our, our CryptoGuard anti-ransomware. It's the the premier feature uh, where customers uh, buy the product. That said, uh, I'm not going to do a product presentation. I'm just going to take you uh, on a tour on uh, what we see uh, on a technical basis, how the uh, uh, how the threat actors are uh, evolving uh, with new tricks. Uh, to stay under the radar of uh, of protection, and uh, what we can do, uh, yeah, to to shield your data, and um, and your customers or, or patients. Um, first, a little bit for people who don't know who I am. Um, even though uh, Rogier did a, a pretty good presentation, um, uh, I'm Mark Lohman. I'm a director of engineering at uh, Sophos. Um, I, Before, in 2015, my company, Surfrite, uh, and my team has been acquired by Sophos. And since 2016, we're building the, uh, we're part of the Intercept X uh, uh, develop, development. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the yeah, endpoint solution uh, that doesn't use virus signatures, so to speak. Before I start, I have to thank uh, uh, Vika Singh, uh, Gabor Saponos, uh, Peter McKenzie, and Ronnie Taying uh, for their contributions to uh, to details on some of the slides that I'm using. Even though they have not actively participated in creating this presentation, uh, these four colleagues have uh, supplied uh, some of the data that I'm presenting today. So. Um, why is ransomware pretty big at the moment? Um, if you uh, Two years ago, the biggest ransom uh, that was asked by the attackers was was about a few a few million, perhaps. Or uh, and everybody knows uh, you have to pay a thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars. Those ransom are still uh, still around, but the big uh, the the big money is is coming and this is caused by um, yeah what what is uh, generally known as the uh, 
as the companies that uh, uh, that give you uh, um, an insurance against uh, cyber attacks, because they decide if uh, if the company should spend time and money to restore the data from backups, because big company data is you know, data is often large, and even restoring takes a lot of time. Um, it's often that the, the insurers uh, say we're going to pay for it, and uh, so they're paying. Um, the, the criminals and the criminals know this so they've um, um, they've upped the uh, the ransom demands and we've and 15 million uh, is not even um, an odd number nowadays <clears throat> well first a little bit about emotet uh, emotet is a uh, is a is, is one of the trojans that that you can receive through uh, through uh, an email or malicious spam email and when you get that trojan um yeah it will install a backdoor like trickbot or or sniff or drydex and when you have that trojan on your box on your endpoint it can lead to an infection with powershell empire or cobalt strike which offer a uh, a convenient uh, uh way to uh, to send commands into uh, the network and to make them to make a map of the network by installing for example bloodhound and uh, uh, preparing the attack with ransomware and uh, ransomware like ryuk or uh, bitpamer are two uh, two well known uh, ransomware uh, threats that have been used in the last well last years. So basically, uh, one of the biggest uh, at the moment is, but also in the news is the is the Rio ransomware, and, and this is the flow that it that, that this ransomware typically takes. There is a malicious uh, mail uh, coming in. And that mail has a as a as a document attached. It's a yeah, what's known as a weaponized document. It has a macro in it. Um, that macro spawns a WMI command, and that WMI command um, spawns a PowerShell command, and that PowerShell command downloads Emotet. Emotet downloads Trickbot, and once that or a Bazaar loader, uh, which is uh, I'm going to cover in a few slides. And uh, then you, yeah, they will try to uh, steal your credentials, uh, uh, install a, a interpreter cobalt strike for persistence. Uh, they create your a new uh, domain admin account, uh, do reconnaissance of where your uh, file servers are, where your backup servers are, um, and they move to these machines over RDP. RDP is the remote desktop protocol. Uh, it's uh, graphical user interface that's easy for humans. I think everybody here knows what RDP is. Um, and when they move, for example, to the uh, to the backup server, they will delete the backups. They will try to disable the protection that's installed on the endpoints and the servers. Um, they can send use scripts to uh, terminate processes, but of course products are nowadays protected by tamper protection. Um, <laughs> Uh, we've also seen in last year that they've tried to log into uh, 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 central environments where you can uh, control the endpoints from a central location and simply use the, the same tools that IT admins use to disable uh, protection throughout the network. Then they set up the script or uh, uh, to, uh, to distribute the ransomware, and then they distribute the ransomware and execute it. So uh, a little bit how's that email, how email like that uh, looks like. This uh, basically pretty old email. Uh, I think it's from uh, almost a year ago. Uh, this is a book of Snowden. Uh, at the time, it was imp uh, highly. Um, uh, it was a topic that people wanted to uh, wanted to read, and there is a the well familiar button enable content. And when you click that button uh, behind the scene, there is a uh, uh, Visual Basic for application code in a macro, and it's uh, obfuscated that uh, attempts to create a process uh, through WMI. And normally, you could you would download a the, the payload itself. It's not inside the document, but it will be downloaded from the internet. And normally, you can download something from the internet using Visual Basic for applications or just spawning, uh, doing uh, the PowerShell command, uh, uh, not through a WM, uh, WMI, but by, uh, by VBA. But they do this 
trick because uh, this way with WMI, uh, the command is not initiated by uh, the this word application, but it's initiated by the explorer process. So uh, there is a disconnect between uh, the document and the process that actually downloads and executes uh, the payload. And in this case, uh, Emotet. So uh, this is difficult for uh, EDR systems to uh, correlate because they uh, correlate uh, processes, child processes, etc. Um, it's a uh, it, this this trick is still used uh, heavily used today, uh, which is why I uh, I can <laughs> I can keep this slide in my deck for today. And uh, when you when you get the Emotet. Uh, on your uh, on your machine, um, yeah, the guys that make Emotet, uh, they also uh, make fun of the coronavirus uh, uh, nowadays. And uh, this file is called uh, yeah coronavirus.exe uh, copyright uh, in China. And uh, and there are some strings in there like have fun in the hospital, uh, LF, LMFAO, and uh, other tricks uh, that they haven't paid attention to or did it they, they deliberately to uh, circumvent detection is to set the debugger string to uh, a time in um, in the future, like 2098. And uh, uh, one of the items that um, that can happen when you uh, uh, when you get infected with uh, Emotet, uh, Trickbot, Cobalt Strike, etc., uh, all in the in the same uh, chain is that they also attempt to uh, to de delete the backups instead of encrypting them. So um, that means even if you would pay for decryption, uh, the backups are actually gone. <clears throat> well, um, one interesting case with uh, with Riokis is that it also is capable of sending wake on LAN packets to uh, wake up machines that uh, are dormant on the network. Especially these types of attacks take place in the night or in the weekend. Um, and when those machines are turned off, uh, yeah, a simple wake on LAN command, if the machine support it, will turn them on and uh, that will make these, uh, uh, will uh, the, uh, the ransomware will attempt to encrypt uh, the C dollar admin share. And in this case, the ransomware was added by the uh, um, active adversary or human operator. Uh, once the uh, Cobalt Strike is uh, installed, um, they crafted in this specific customer, they crafted a, a scheduled task to, uh, on every endpoint uh, where, uh, where the ransomware was executed. And as you can see, it, was, uh, it, it automatically has the, the correct uh, or required uh, privileges. Uh, it runs as a system or as a admin, uh, uh, under admin privileges. So uh, user privileges are not involved here. Uh, what's also interesting about the Ryuk is that, and this you can see here, there uh, it's in, uh, encrypting a uh, nurse station. Is that uh, uh, it? Uh, it wakes up machines and attempts to infect those uh, other machines that were uh, uh, were sleeping and uh, attacking them over the share name C dollar. So even if your machines are shut down, uh, your machines can still get infected and the data encrypted. <clears throat> As mentioned with uh, with Cobalt Strike, we, uh, we've crafted a, um, uh, that my team is responsible for crafting uh, detections that do not rely on signatures, but uh, on behaviors instead. And these types of behaviors are uh, uh, like uh, how memory is allocated, or what the, what is about to be done with that memory? Um, it's mo more. Uh, it's it, uh, yeah. We craft guy um, guardrails to make sure that code execution happens the way the um, the original programmer intended. And in this case, uh, <clears throat> you can see that um, uh, there is a uh, the user was browsing the web. Uh, likely to open its webmail, and it downloaded a file called preview.exe uh, in the process trace. So um, this was probably in a, on the um, on an email web email site 
uh, and it, uh, that led with a uh, hyperlink uh, to download the preview. And when the preview was launched uh, from the uh, um, from the browser, you can see that there is a DLL involved, uh, and that was that spawned by Run DLL. So Run DLL is a trusted application, and the DLL is uh, yeah is load is running inside the trusted um, in inside a pr trusted process. It's not immediately uh, um, evident that there is malicious code running in Run DLL, but our mitigation, uh, which is designed to uh, uh, to stop dynamic shell code, um, we see that there is. Um, yeah, additional heap memory allocated, and we do some, and uh, we prevent that from happening, and we analyze the uh, the code that that is attempting to uh, to allocate the extra um, memory for the um, for the cobalt strike. And that extra memory uh, uh, before that extra memory is created, there is a is what what uh, what is called a a stage is uh, this you have a stage and a stager. In a stage, this is a small piece of code that tries to figure out what type of operating system am I running on, and uh, and and then retrieves the correct um, backdoor implant for the specific endpoint. So, and in this case, um, uh, if if you are able to uh, to scrape the memory, which is what our uh, uh, our mitigation actually does, is we can also see that is the the C two address in this. Uh, um, in this shell code is, is this address. And we can also see there's a user agent here. Um, well, this op this machine was obviously not running uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer 6. But what's interesting here is the ICAR strings, of course. And this is an indication that the attackers were using a trial version of Cobalt Strike uh, because the trial version of Cobalt Strike puts uh, the ICAR antivirus string in uh, in the shell code. So basically, what our mitigation does is it uh, it only allows the uh, um, the allocation of executable code on the heap once, and the heap is 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 basically the free memory. Uh, normally, when you spawn a process, there is a uh, that's the green block, and it it loads the DLLs. And if you want to introduce additional code, you can do that once. If you want to uh, uh, add additional uh, additional code, you can do that, but it has to happen from the image memory from the original uh, from the original code. If that happens from the free heap the, the heap memory, basically the dynamic memory, you cannot uh, uh, allocate additional uh, memory for because this is a typical way for um, malware to uh, unpack their um, encrypted. Uh, Malware for uh, yeah the, the the eventual malware or uh, meterpreter cobalt strike or even apt code what that's like in the C C cleaner um, apt case. So uh, there were other <laughs> cases where we would uh, they are aware of us and they uh, um, they nowadays they uh, they all all the big attackers like Ryuk and Maze they. Um, they uh, make sure that all their code is code signed, so they are purchasing uh, legitimate certificates because they know that uh, some endpoint products um, are more lenient towards code that is uh, properly code signed. And uh, Ryuk ran into our product several times, and they, uh, for a while they uh, added this uh, this specific useless um query of this specific key uh it's not in the in in the real code nowadays because uh yeah they moved on and um and if if um yeah they they um they now make fun of other <laughs> other vendors sometimes as well <clears throat> So what basically when um, uh, uh, what what Ryuk was uh, uh, was deployed within uh, networks uh, through mail spam, uh, they used uh, Emotet and that led to Trickbot or to Drydex, uh, which is a the backdoor implant and that led to Cobalt Strike or Meterpreter or PowerShell Empire. 
but since Microsoft took down a TrickBot a few weeks ago, together with uh, the Department of Homeland Security and uh, um, the uh, the threat actor behind Ryuk and, and uh, TrickBot decided to uh, yeah to start using a different loader. Uh, different uh, with a different infrastructure in this case is the bazaar loader it's pretty new as you can see the the telemetry is from the from just a few days ago um, <clears throat> there was a, a, a spam run um, sent out to uh, uh, to victims and they received it and it was a lure a lure in there that that enticed them to open the uh, the link click on the link because this, there's no uh, document here. And that link that opened, in this case, at this victim, Internet Explorer, and that opened the uh, uh, Google uh, Google Docs web page where the attackers hosted a, uh, a file that they shared with, uh, with the world. And uh, on Google Docs, they, uh, they, the victim uh, had to download the executable. And when they ran the executable, it attempted to uh, spawn a legitimate uh, a a application like uh, cmd.exe. Um, <clears throat> this, in this case, they weren't using cmd to execute commands, but they uh, solely spawn uh, spawned it as a container uh, for their hostile code. So if you would open Task Manager, you will see cmd.exe, but there is no command involved, and uh, all the malicious code is actually um, inside uh, this process. Uh, and um, they did this through a technique but called process hollowing. That means they spawn a process, they uh, freeze it, they uh, eject the code uh, of cmd.exe, and they put a different uh, um, a different binary uh, there. It doesn't even need to be uh, a file on the disk. It could also be straight from memory. And, and then they thaw the process and the entire hostile process now still runs in the context of cmd.exe. This is a, a trick uh, that the product is capable of detecting. And it's a, it's a signatureless, it's a behavior uh, detection. And uh, we made this mitigation in 2014, I think. So it's already six years old, doing great against these, uh, this, this new, new attack. So how did you, this is an email that, uh, the typical email that's being sent out. It's not just the bazaar loader uh, spreading uh, the, the, uh, the actors behind the bazaar loading using these types of links to Google Docs. It's also the Boer loader. Looks a little bit of the same. Um, it's a different, uh, it's a different loader though, uh, but the, uh, the ammo is basically the same. <clears throat> and when you receive that, uh, when you see that the report review and you look at the details of, uh, of that executable, you can see that it's, um, in this case, it's best FUD, <laughs> fully undetected. And what's also interesting here is that they, uh, if you have Visual Studio and you, and you compile an application, um, you forget to uh, put in your product name or your company name. Um, it puts in there uh, a default default name. It says to do. In this case, there is Chinese characters that says company name. So the, you would almost expect that these these attackers are from China. Uh, also seen here in the language simplified China, but don't be fooled. Uh, even the Russians. Uh, may do this deliberately to uh, uh, to make you think different. And when you uh, upload the uh, Bazaar Loader, I don't know if you're familiar with VirusTotal, but uh, VirusTotal is a website where you can uh, statically analyze um, or even sometimes behavior analyze uh, um, a, a, a binary or a document. And in this case, I uploaded the um, well, actually, someone else already uploaded this file. And uh, it was detected only by two engines out of 69 at the time this uh, file made the rounds. That's because the file is properly signed. So the attackers actually bought a legitimate uh, certificate. And uh, that severely affects 
uh, the detection um, of, of, uh, yeah, of a loader like this one. It must also be said that this is a particularly new loader, but since it uses um, common adversary tricks, we block it anyway. So even though the Sophos product blocked it, uh, you will not see it here on VirusTotal because VirusTotal only does static analysis and doesn't do re really do a dynamic analysis of uh, yeah, requested from those 69 engines. They're just static analysis. So it's a, actually, you cannot use VirusTotal to, uh, to determine the efficacy of a uh, security product. And uh, what's interesting here is that this case also led to the infection at, the, at this specific customer, um, which is which is odd, of course, because we actually blocked um, the dropper, the loader. But eventually, this customer, in, only a day later, got infected with Ryuk. And this uh, this means that there are other endpoints in the, the network of this customer that weren't protected by our software, which is actually the main cause uh, of where uh, some of our customers may get hit by ransomware. And in this case, the deployment of the ransomware uh, happened through PSXIC, a uh, well-known tool for by sys internals and um, would typically be blocked by, uh, by the product out of the box as a potentially unwanted applications. But this customer uh, probably uh, uh, allowed this to, uh, the use of this tool. And what's also interesting here is that you can see that uh, it attempted to um, uh, encrypt the files on this box through a, the C uh, dollar share. But since it's the same box, um, yeah, we, it, it uses the network instead of the local data uh, to uh, to attack this box. So th this is a pretty uh, interesting case because. Um, a lot of anti-ransomware approaches only shield the local data and don't shield the remote data. Um, and also this, uh, this real uh, sample was properly signed at the time. As you can see, it was signed at uh, 10 minutes past, uh, well, <laughs> 20 minutes to th three. Uh, uh, at the, at this moment, this this certificate has been revoked, of course, but this again helps uh, the attackers uh, to bypass security uh, without being checked thoroughly. <clears throat> and um, what we what my team typically does is also take a look at if uh, if it has. Um, a, a different way of uh, encrypting the data on the disk. And this is a, and Ryuk is actually a very good example of lean and mean, straightforward uh, encryption. Um, because it, it uh, this is a uh, the same, what you can also visualize with a tool called Process Monitor for Assist Internals. The uh, <coughs> pardon me. The, uh, the original document is open for reading and writing. The data is read from the document. New uh, data is written in the document on the same sectors as the original. So even if you use a recovery tool, you will yeah, there's nothing to recover because the data has been overwritten on the same sectors. And then it closes it, and then it renames the, the documents. Really lean and mean. And it's exactly what our anti-ransomware uh, typically looks for because it analyzes everything between opening the file and closing the file. So um, this is super straightforward. And even the first crypto guard that we built in 2013 will, will block this. Uh, as mentioned at the start of the presentation is um, Microsoft and uh, law enforcement in the US has been trying to uh, uh, take down TrickBot um, that is the uh, trick what's being used for, for uh, by uh, by the uh, real ransomware. It's being distributed uh, by TrickBot, and uh, they took it down. Microsoft and law enforcement because uh, they were afraid that they could disrupt the presidential presidential election in uh, three weeks at that time uh, uh, that is scheduled in the U.S. at this time uh, over in a week. So uh, apparently these guys were, um, uh, the, the Russian guys were uh, 
were, I think, angry because they now uh, have announced that they were uh, about to target about 400 hospitals. And uh, and these attackers, they already claim that they've infected more than 30 uh, hospitals. I don't know why they would uh, exactly to uh, send out a message like this because they could easily already do this. Uh, so they may uh, may actually be uh, something uh, political involved uh, uh, in this case. Uh, but we see these types of attacks happening every day. Um, and not just at hospitals, but uh, at industrial, uh, industrial automotive, uh, aerospace, um, all, all the way uh, to car manufacturers, even bicycles, uh, uh, distributors, etc. Uh, one notable uh, change that has that is happening, especially this year, is that uh, all, uh, beyond encrypting the data before they encrypt it, uh, they these attackers uh, also exfiltrate uh, a large sum of data from uh, from the from the victim network. In this case, here you have uh, Ragnar Locker. Um, they even have a wall of shame uh, where they list the companies that that they've hacked and uh, uh and um and there where they stole the da stole data and they stole the data and just in case this company uh, has decided not to pay or they haven't don't have insurance or um and uh yeah <clears throat> so and then if they don't pay they uh, threaten to pu <clears throat> publish the data hang on <clears throat> In this case, it doesn't look much on the, on the right side, uh, but there is a lot more uh, in other um, ransomware uh, families. For example, the dark side ransomware, where there is a, uh, a lot of data stolen. On the right side, you can see uh, types of the folders that have been copied off the network, and there they have more uh, than 100 gigabytes uh, of data. Uh, that they threaten to release if they don't pay the ransom. So even though your your data may uh, may be um, <clears throat> may not be encrypted, uh, you may still be uh, <laughs> uh, on the threat of um, that your data being publicly disclosed. And the biggest one is here from Revel that I've seen lately is uh, where they have where the Revel um, guys have stolen about. Uh, almost two terabytes of data from a company called Madsen. But there are more infamous threats like uh, uh, that I want to discuss is uh, like Snatch, um, where the, uh, the Snatch actors brute force credentials on the Windows Server in Microsoft Azure. Again, uh, yeah, they did this over an open RDP. Um, they move rapidly to, uh, to the Active Directory domain controller. They uh, uh, took several weeks <laughs> to uh, investigate uh, the target and used a tool like Advanced Port Scanner. Uh, and they also tried to disable antivirus using tools like Process Hacker uh, or IOBit Uninstaller. And they, again, they used uh, a popular, the popular tool PSXEC to execute the ransomware on, all, on every endpoint in the machine. What's interesting, though, is that it's different uh, from other ransomware is that this one uh, actually registered a service in the Windows registry uh, called Super Backup Man. And they did that in the safe boot minimal. And then they changed the boot mode from Windows using the BCD added utility that's part of Windows. So if you would reboot the machine, it would not boot in a normal environment, but it would boot in the safe boot environment. And the safe boot environment is is basically an environment used for troubleshooting only uh, by uh, a system admin. And in the troubleshooting environment, there is there are no ser there's a limited amount of services. Basically, nothing runs there. So um, they set up the ransomware to run in safe boot. Then they uh, shut down the machine, and uh, they do this because security products don't run in safe mode because yeah a lot of security products have become become better uh there is a lot of different different uh, products uh, the one is better than the other but um it's this is an interesting case they uh, where they 
completely circumvent um, the protection altogether. Another one that we uh, came across was Robin Hood. Uh, you, maybe you know the term living, uh, living off the land where the attackers uh, were using, uh, are using um, applications that are already part of your, of the endpoint or the server or on the network. And, but in this case, uh, the attackers are bringing, bringing something. Uh, and in this case, they brought a vulnerable driver. Basically what they, uh, what they did is they, um, they landed a legitimate trusted signed driver, but this driver contains a vulnerability that, and if you would uh, leverage it, it allows you to uh, uh, arbitrary read write of memory and especially in kernel memory. And they used it to flip just one bit, one byte in uh, in kernel memory to disable the driver signing enforcement. And uh, this allowed them to load a driver that is not, uh, signed by co-signed by Microsoft. So if nowadays, if you would, in, if you want to develop a driver for Windows, it needs to be co-signed by Microsoft. So Microsoft must have seen this driver, and they, you can turn it off. But and they normally, you uh, as an admin, you uh, have to flip a switch and reboot the box. But uh, in this case, the attackers can do that on the fly by just flipping a byte uh, in the kernel, and they use a a driver for this. In this case. They used uh, that we've known that we've witnessed is they used a uh, a driver from Gigabyte. So even though your if your computers are fully patched and they have no known vulnerabilities, they can still become encrypted uh, because the attackers can bring their own vulnerability instead to circumvent secu the security that's in place. <clears throat> and what's interesting this this malicious driver RBNL.sys in this case, it had seven ways. To um, to terminate to remove a file from the disk, and uh, uh, or and um, terminate uh, processes. And since this happens from the the kernel, uh, filtering from security products are basically uh, not effective because kernel handles cannot be filtered and they communicate directly with drivers. Well, maybe you've heard of Revel. Uh, another uh, big threat actor is still active. Um, they made headlines uh, months ago because they uh, uh, infiltrated TravelX by uh, um, abusing a vulnerability in the Pulse Secure VPN boxes that TravelX hadn't patched at the time. They're still active today. Um, how active? Uh, well, typically, if you're familiar with how managed service providers uh, work, they, um, well, companies that don't have their own IT, they outsource their um uh, it operations to another company a managed service provider and uh they typically have software on your on the on the boxes on the on the endpoints that they can control from remote so if you if the company has a problem with it they can call the msp and the msp can take over the machine run commands etc in this case the um uh the msp was hacked uh, or the computer, uh, the credentials were uh, stolen and uh, the attacker gained access to the uh, remote control. And in this case, you can infect um, multiple customers of this MSP, not just a single company, but multiple companies. And something like this happened in uh, uh, earlier this year in Texas where about over 20 uh, uh, government or uh, bodies were infected at the same time. In this case, you, they you abused the uh, Screen Connect client or Connect ConnectWise control. It download it start, uh, spawned a PowerShell command to download um, a base sixty. Uh, well, uh, a PowerShell script, and in the PowerShell script there was base sixty four uh, body uh, of the of the Revel ransomware, and it was loaded straight into memory. So that means the Revel ransomware itself wasn't actually written to disk. It was loaded straight into memory, and all the encryption happened uh, from the PowerShell command. So again, from a seemingly uh, trusted process. Uh, and uh, even uh, Revel has a different, um, uh, but also pretty straightforward in-place encryption. Um, 
different from Ryuk. It, the Ryuk does a, the uh, also writes the blob in the it is in the same um, uh, same command, but in uh, Revel writes it uh, <coughs> as a, as an extra command. Another interesting case is Ragnar Locker, um, uh, where we uh, where the initial access happened through valid account on uh, on over RDP again. And where the uh, attacker were created, uh, um, well, they they already had a uh, had a domain admin account that they've uh, found uh, or purchased or some other way, and um, to, and they created their own account. So even if um, if if a network is compromised and everybody is asked, please uh, change your passwords. Uh, these these adversaries still ha still have access because there is an additional. Uh, uh, account created. So if you're if you're if you're infiltrated, compromised, uh, yeah, check who's check who's all uh, who's domain admin. So in this case, they created the group group policy object for every endpoint and server, and that uh, command was uh, using uh, would be almost called a, a lol bin, living off the land binary MSE exec. It's the Microsoft installer, but you can uh, ask the Microsoft installer to download a payload from a remote location. And in this case, it downloaded a big MSI package of 122 megabyte. It uh, was called Oracle uh, Incorporated. And since it uh, runs from the Google policy object, it uh, it ran with admin privileges. And inside this package, there was a portable version of VirtualBox 3.0, which is from 2009. And uh, what's interesting is at the time, uh, in 2009, it was it was still owned by Sun instead of Oracle. So even though this package was named Oracle Inc., it was uh, it's not accurate. <laughs> um, but this package also contains the virtual disk image file, which is almost 300 megab megabytes, uh, with a file called Micro VDI, and uh, that uh, virtual disk image was a Windows XP SP3 operating system. A special version, what they call micro XP, and uh, and the sole purpose of this um, VM is to uh, so it hosts a 50 kilobyte uh, ransomware. So basically, they brought their own uh, device or virtual machine and they weaponized it. <clears throat> so this is uh, th these are screenshots from inside uh, the micro VDI that I. Uh, and they run from uh, from from VirtualBox. You can see actually the files. What's interesting uh, is, of course, how can a virtual machine uh, uh, affect the the physical world? So um, there was a script involved that enumerated all the local disks and network drives and removable drives, and they wrote it into the configuration file, the XML file. Uh, the the company, the uh, the micro VDI, VDI, and inside the VM, there is a batch file that mounts those shared folders uh, that are uh, available on the physical machine. They mount it in uh, the virtual environment, and when and then they spun up the um, the virtual machine, and uh, and the pr the malicious ransomware processes can run uh, unhindered, out of reach of the antivirus on the on the physical machine. And what's interesting is that all the uh, the data is uh, is is attacked by uh, on the physical machines uh, by the v virtual box headless process. So again, it's by a pro trusted process, and there is no nothing there. Yeah, even though you have signatures for the ransomware itself, an antivirus product typically doesn't scan a virtual machine. Um, it has to be installed in the virtual machine as well, and that doesn't happen automatically. Nonetheless, our, our product was able to uh, to stop this because it's a it has a zero trust approach and uh, no files were encrypted. So I, I also promised how a maze uh, adversary attacked a healthcare provider. <laughs> it happened over the course of a few uh, nine days. They uh, uh, compromised Citrix server that they used as a beachhead. Again, an unprotected domain controller uh, uh, is. Uh, is accessed using a, a command with a, a, a user account with a weak password, and they installed a, a malicious service that ran a PowerShell Cobalt Strike implant. 
And then again, they move laterally over the network using a remote desktop protocol. Again, they used uh, free, aware, free uh, available trusted tools like uh, Advanced IP Scanner, uh, WinRAR, 7-Zip, Total Commander. And they used this, these, these last three tools to, uh, to steal data from the network and upload it to the mega cloud storage, which was typically blocked by our protection because we do not, uh, uh, the customer actually uh, configured it that it was not allowed to access mega. Uh, or then it was not allowed to uh, uh, install the mega uh, application. So they started to use a web browser to upload the data to uh, to mega. And then they they waited for two days because it wasn't the weekend yet. And in the weekend, uh, on the Sunday, they copied six, uh, three files and uh, scheduled three tasks. And they targeted about 700 endpoints. And the product blocked it. Uh, uh, our ransomware, anti-ransomware protection blocked it. And even though no files were encrypted, they made their demand of 15 million uh, US dollars. <clears throat> so the customer knew now knew that they were under attack because of the uh, large amount of uh, warnings in the in the dashboard. They uh, scheduled a rapid response, uh, purchased rapid response. Uh, who uh, disabled the accounts, uh, found malicious files, and uh, determined that data was exfiltrated. But we're still they were still investigating how the th how the how the uh, threat actors came on the box because they came on a box that was unprotected. So they were even though they were still on the they could, were able to launch a second ransomware attack. They used uh, a different domain account now, and they still uh, yeah they had the IP addresses of other machines. They tried to disable Microsoft Defender. They um, uh, created a scheduled task uh, in Google's uh, Chrome security update, and again, nothing was encrypted. And the MTR team, that uh, the rapid response team, that saw us that was monitoring this saw this and. Um, stop this attack, uh, roll back the attack as well. And just hours after this second attempt, they tried, made, they tried a third time, but now they did completely different approach. They used the same approach that was, that was first discovered by the same team uh, that was used by Ragnar Locker. But instead of deploying Windows XP, they deployed a Windows 7 SP1 virtual machine which is a lot larger, two gigabytes uh, on the virtual disk image. And the ransomware was also about uh, 10 times larger. What's different, though, is that the script uh, that was running in VMware, uh, there was it checked if it was run on the builder machine. So this script is, was actually also capable of, um, of preparing a VM before sending it out to the customer. So they made it really easy to swap the, swap the payload. Again, no files uh, encrypted. So three three times, this healthcare provider was attacked, uh, and no data was lost. Interesting here is though is that uh, the maze is actually creating a, a file mapping, so it could read and write uh, straight to uh, from to a document that that is uh, cached in memory. That means that the write uh, command uh, isn't visible. In, uh, in uh, isn't immediately evident uh, uh, when you do um, file activity activity analysis, and to, uh, specifically the writing is actually performed by process ID four. It's the system process. So um, yeah, there. If if your anti ransomware is incapable of handling these types of uh, tricks, uh, yeah, you will <laughs> you will miss this ransomware behavior. And uh, what's new is that the Maze ransomware said they were shutting down a cybercrime uh, operation and they're moving to the Egregor ransomware. And the Egregor ransomware has some other new tricks up its sleeve as well. It comes in as a DLL. Uh, in this case, they distributed it through WMI, but also we've seen uh, other recent uh, attacks where they st also st uh, used PSXEC. And again, the encryption is done by uh, by a proxy, in this case, trusted run DLL, and uh, the DLL is protected with a password. So uh, to, to evade the sandbox analysis. So if this DLL is uploaded to a sandbox, um, the DLL will not become active. And if you would upload this again, um, yeah, you will see there is a very low 
uh, detection ratio at the time this uh, this threat was distributed. Um, but since uh, the product works on behavior, uh, no foul. <laughs> and you can see there is a different. Uh, it it has a more straightforward. Even though the um, there there is word that the Agrigor has the same tooling or code as as Maze. Um, actually, the file system activity looks a little bit different compared to um, compared to Maze. Just one case left: wasted locker. Uh, that I wanted to cover tonight, which is interesting because um, they use a quirk or a trick that's actually not well documented. Typically, if you uh, if you open a file for uh, for reading and writing, um, when you're done with it, you close it. But but in this case, the wasted locker adversary they also create a file map like Maze, but they uh, <clears throat> so the so the the changes are written to disk by um, by the Windows Cache Manager, which speeds up things. But in this case, um, normally you need to read it before you close the document. But uh, there is, if uh, you can still, in this case, you could still read it because the Windows Cache Manager keeps an internal handle. So if you have a behavior and uh, behavioral based anti ransomware, it yeah, it will not see that you've actually read or changed uh, a document. And what's matters become worse if if a um, if you have a product like an antivirus or a backup program uh, that makes an additional cop. Uh, for example, if you open a document for reading and writing, you can you can have a backup uh, program or an antivirus that that does an inspection before you before you read it or make a backup. And if this happens and that 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 other product has a lower uh, driver altitude, it means this document is cached to memory that means that even uh if the ransomware starts reading it after closing the file um that activity you will not see because uh um, it will be served straight from memory so the uh, the third party antivirus or a backup program or encryption product uh will thwart the detection uh by uh, by anti ransom uh, anti ransomware, so uh, yeah, the tricks are getting uh, getting a lot better. Uh, there are apparently a lot of money involved with the uh, cyber criminals, so they can do these types of investigations, or uh, at least they have very skilled people. Uh, they probably pay them well for these um, uh, for these tricks. So you uh, yeah, you definitely need to keep up with. Uh, uh, in, in order to stay ahead. So this is a little bit of my, uh, uh, yeah, what we've seen uh, in the last few months. Uh, maybe there are some questions, probably. Let's see. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Interesting to see what all the trends are uh, all about, uh, Mark. So maybe I can start with the first uh, first question. Uh, I was wondering this this whole safe boot trick. What in what the hell can a antivirus solution do there? I mean, uh, I, I would assume that your Hitman Pro uh, alert uh, solution will be also be disabled after a safe boot, or or no? Actually, we we have support for it. If you um, if you reboot the box, our, uh, we can do the same trick. If you we if we see something written to the safe boot, we uh, we we write ourselves in. Uh, we make sure that our pro, uh, service also runs. You will lose telemetry uh, because yeah, well, networking is not available in uh, in uh, in safe mode. But um, still, your data is not encrypted. But also in this case that I showed is there's actually an executable uh, uh, scheduled as a service. Uh, but we've also seen other an, another ransomware, and actually nobody wrote about that yet. But um, that actually uh, doesn't uh, install a, an executable to be run in safe mode, but it runs a PowerShell command with a PowerShell script. So um, you are now unmuted. And the PowerShell script is only started uh, is only executed in um, yeah in safe mode. So uh, yeah, and there, so even if you have machine learning on an executable or signatures on an executable, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you can 
you can still detect that uh, in normal mode, uh, but uh, <clears throat> but typically, if PowerShell is not executed in normal mode, um, yeah, it can it can be scheduled for safe mode, and then you can re reboot it. But um, long story short, yeah, Hitman Pro Alert uh, is has a support for safe mode. Okay, cool. name even a slok taxi. Yeah, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> Er is een vraag in de chat. Um, ah ja, yeah. non-Windows non malware. Well, of, co of course, um, it is misschien, actually... Misschien zullen we dan naar Nederlands kunnen switchen nu. Uh, nou al. Oh ja. ja, we komen natuurlijk inderdaad ook wel uh, non-Windows malware tegen. Um, misschien hebben jullie wel gelezen dat er uh, eerder dit jaar... Um, uh, een firewall van Sophos uh, getarget is door een, uh, een aanvaller. Die had een vulnerability gevonden, een zero d uh, Er is wel een blog over bij, uh, bij Sophos. Ik kan er nog niet te veel over vertellen. <coughs> maar um, wat wel interessant is dat deze aanvaller uh, uh, code wist uit te voeren op de firewall. Dat we, uh, kennen we wel vaker hè, van Pulse Secure en dat soort dingetjes. Um, en die, uh, en die, die, die malware die, uh, was gemaakt, uh, die ze, uh, de code, de Linux malware die ze hebben gemaakt, uh, die viel de, um, uh, de endpoints in het netwerk aan. Nou hebben ze die, uh, die malware zo geschreven dat die inderdaad Windows endpoints aanvalt. Maar in principe deze malware die is geschreven om op, uh, uh, op, li op Linux machines uh, uh, de aanval uit te voeren. Maar we hebben ook uh, wel... Uh, um, uh, andere, het zijn vaak APT's die, uh, die Linux targeten. Ja, we schrijven daar eigenlijk niet zoveel over. Want het meeste is, uh, is bijna allemaal Windows waar je wat de klok slaat, wat heel veel rondgaat natuurlijk. Maar de meeste is allemaal wat in Linux plaatsvindt, is vaak uh, APT's uh, allemaal ha super handwerk. <tie> ja, dat is eigenlijk een beetje wat ik uh, daarover kan vertellen. <tie> Geen uh, Oracle uh, Solaris. Uh. Oh, ja, die slide had ik er nog in moeten zetten, maar um, uh, ja, ze vallen er ook uh, de Oracle Web Server. Uh, uh, maar ook daar uh, wordt dan weer daarna Windows malware naar binnen uh, gehengeld. De uh, point of entry is dan een, uh, inderdaad een, uh, een Linux bak. Of, uh, maar de, en daarna gaan ze weer verder uh, om de Windows machines uh, te infiltreren. En ook al heb je Linux servers waar de data op staat, ook al wordt de Linux server zelf niet besmet, de data die erop staat raakt wel versleuteld natuurlijk. Wie heeft er nog meer een mooie vraag? Ja, je, ziet het, je hoort er niet zoveel over in de Nederlandse pers, hè? Dat is, maar het, echt, het is echt... Te, ik, ik ben nog nooit zo druk geweest. Ik heb... Uh, dat is echt uh, kering en inslag. En ook Sofas heeft een nieuwe dienst opgezet, hè, de Rapid Response. En, uh, want lang niet iedereen, uh, ook al koop je licentie voor uh, 2200 endpoints, dan moet je het wel installeren op al je machines. En uh, de boeven die vinden altijd een machine uh, waar de software niet op, uh, uh, op actief is. Of... <coughs> en van daaruit uh, uh, infiltreren ze het netwerk. <coughs> en dan gaan ze op zoek... Uh, ja, naar de kroonjuwelen, zeg maar. En, dat, uh, ja, en dan heb je toch hulp nodig om, uh, om, om de aanvaller weer van je netwerk uh, zien te krijgen. Want die zit op een machine waar je eigenlijk geen uh, zichtbaarheid hebt. Wat, wat, wat mij opviel in een van de voorbeelden, was een, een voorbeeld waarin je zegt, er wordt een, een, een virtual box image gedownload, of een virtual box programma, vervolgens nog een image van, van 300 Mac. Ja, dit sterk nog in, de, in, de, in, de, in die... Op die ja. De subtiliteit druipt er vanaf. Dat moet toch opvallen als jij 400 meg gaat downloaden? Ja, maar ja, nee, dus, uh, ah. <laughs> ik denk dat jullie de, de, je netwerk traffic nog wel een beetje in de gaten houden. Maar zo werkt het in de rest van de wereld totaal niet. Er zit niemand bovenop de netwerk traffic. En uh, sterk, uh, uh, is je, uh, die, die, nou, die, die MSI is 122 uh, MB. Maar die aanval die wordt uitgevoerd op 500 machines. En die, gaan, die 500 machines die gaan gewoon even die 122 MB downloaden. Dus niet een staging server ergens in het netwerk. Maar die gaan gewoon allemaal individueel die, 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 dat pakketje ophalen. En die... Ja, 
temps à l'abri. Dans plus tard. <rire> ja, ja, ja. Maar als er 500 PC's dat gaan doen, dan gaat uh, de, uh, de 538 radiostream van de secretaresse toch dood? Die merkt. Ah, en dan is meteen de aandacht ook verlegd op wat anders. Dat, uh, daar, daar zul je niet zoveel last van hebben dat die do- doodgaat als je op uh, grote netwerken zit. Uh, universiteiten en ziekenhuizen die, die zitten allemaal op uh, hele grote bandbreedte netwerken. Dus t- dan kom je gewoon naar binnen zonder dat uh, iemand het merkt. Dat is waar. Hé, hey, er was laatst... Dat is preaching to the choir. Um, uh, uh, er was laatst wat uh, uh, aandacht in de pers over bulletproof hosters. Uh, merk je daar ook iets van? Uh, ja, de, de, wat we wel, de, de, het wordt al wel wat lastig, of wat heter onder de voeten van uh, cybercriminelen. We zien wel dat er bepaalde uh, diensten nu ook wel een beetje gehost gaan worden in, uh, in, in Rusland en zo. Uh, maar ja. Uh, ik weet toevallig dat uh, ja, Nederland is een mooi, fantastisch, uh, fantastisch land. Daar met heel veel datacentra. En uh, ik, ik, ja, laat, laat de boeven maar lekker hier komen, laat ik het zo stellen. <laughs> Dan kun je er makkelijk bij. <laughs> ja, van bulletproof hosters uh, heb alleen een beetje last van in de AGM van de, van de Ripe Army Meeting. Maar dat uh, proces dat gaan ze nu ook een beetje. Uh, uh, hardener. Ja, we pakken het allemaal wel. Nou ja, er, staan genoeg, er zijn genoeg, op dit moment best wel genoeg uh, uh, staging servers, bijvoorbeeld van een uh, Egregor uh, ransomware, wat nou helemaal hot is, omdat uh, Mees een beetje schijnbaar ermee op lijkt te houden. Dus daar staat uh, de command en control staat gewoon in Nederland ergens. Ik heb nog maar een leuke vraag. Vraag. Dat is ook gewoon een, 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 een tussenserver, want die, daar staat gewoon een remote desktop op en de aanvaller zelf komt weer vanaf een ander adres, dus ze gebruiken hem zeg maar als een soort proxy. Ja. Onze, onze eigen overheid die, uh, gebruikt graag uh, zero days om, uh, uh, hoe zeggen ze dat nou zelf? You are now muted. Om ons veilig te houden natuurlijk. Ja, hè? precies, ja, zoiets. Ja. <laughs> you are now ja, precies. Al die verschrikkelijke ja, dingen die je echt niet wil. Um, maar die laten natuurlijk ook wel steekjes vallen. Kom je wel eens een overheidsdienst tegen? Ja, die komen we wel eens tegen, ja. En wat zeggen ze dan? Dat is niet... Uh... <lacht> het is niet uh, de Nederlandse overheid of zo, waar we mee te maken hebben, maar... Uh... De Chinezen bijvoorbeeld. Oké, okay. dus die, die, onze eigen overheid die zijn daadwerkelijk best wel goed. Nou, ze zijn wel om belastingaangiftes en zo. <laughs> ja, dat, ja, die hoeven het misschien helemaal niet moeilijk te doen. Hè? We hebben het allemaal op de machine staan. <laughs> ja. Ja, het kan natuurlijk ook zo zijn dat, dat netwerken uh, in, in de loop van de jaren uh, wat organisch uh, groeien. En dat de toenbedachte segmentatie van al die uh, straten, zullen we maar, maar, maar zeggen, van dat dat uh, ja, wordt overgeslagen of, of van dat dat vergeten wordt. Of, da, of da, dat er ineens uh, andere paden komen. Of dat de security uh, zo strikt is ingesteld dat het personeel uh, zelf uh, ja, daar een, een, een hand in de mouw aan gaat passen. Hallo, DigiNoter. Um, ja, en, 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 en ja, naarmate de complexiteit uh, toeneemt en dat daarmee ook uh, ja, het zicht op het uh, rijden en zijnen in dat netwerk ja, uh, uh, verloren gaat. Nou, ik denk ook dat de Nederlandse overheid zich... Ik, 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 ik hou me voornamelijk bezig met uh, wat er op, uh, op um, de endpoint of op een server gebeurt. Ik denk dat de Nederlandse overheid die, uh, die doet dat op allemaal op andere manieren. Die hoeven niet uh, een zero d in te zetten bij, uh, bij een van onze klanten. Dat doen ze wel op een andere manier uh, waar, uh, om, om eraf te luisteren. 
Ja. Ja. Uh, van, van, van bijvoorbeeld vanuit uh, ja, het Linux perspectief. Ja, je hebt daar het uh, security hardening framework uh, geliefd of uh, verguist. Uh, dat uh, ligt er even aan. Uh, SE Linux. Maar dan, dan zie je van dat uh, klanten komen met, met hun uh, webapplicaties en, en ja, dan van de werk het even niet. En dan uh, zegt men, nou weet je wat, uh, SE Linux zet dat maar op uh, di disabled, uh, misschien op permissive. Ja, dan dat is... haal, haal je een hoop uh, van die verdediging haal je al de voorbaat weg. Nou, dat is ook het grote probleem van uh, wat je heel veel ziet nou op Windows, is dat Microsoft heel erg in opkomst is met hun, uh, hun ATP Advanced Threat Protection Platform. En ook Windows is uh, enorm verbeterd de laatste jaren uh, uh, qua uh, secure computing. Moet je wel die dingen allemaal aanzetten, zeg maar. En je kunt allemaal allerlei uh, mitigations uh, aanzetten. Maar het probleem met uh, wat Microsoft heel erg heeft, is dat uh, het, is alle, het is aan of uit. En als je een applicatie hebt die, uh, die, die moeite heeft met een van die mitigations, kun je daar niet... Uh, ja, fine-grained aan draaien, zeg maar, van, uh, oké, okay, deze, deze, als de code, uh, als hij hier uh, uit, de, uit de baan vliegt, dreigt te vliegen, dan, uh, dan mag dat eventjes, bijvoorbeeld, uh, als, de als de stack op deze manier uh, eruit ziet, uh, en hij wil naar dat stukje geheugengebied, dan kun je dan toestaan. Dat, dat heeft, dat heeft uh, Microsoft bijvoorbeeld, dat hebben wij bijvoorbeeld dan weer wel. En dan kunnen we ook op afstand gewoon zien, als er iets triggert, nou, dit is, kunnen we onderzoeken, kunnen we dat uh, uh, toestaan. En zo, uh, daarom is het ja, bij, 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 bij Microsoft eigenlijk nog niet... Ze hebben het heel veilig, ze kunnen, je kan het heel redelijk veilig krijgen. Alleen het is onbruikbaar in de praktijk. Nu komen ze bijvoorbeeld ook uh, met een virtuele omgeving voor je, uh, voor, 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 voor je Office applicaties. Omdat je, ja, mensen kunnen macro's klikken of ze kunnen vulnerabilities in zitten. Maar eigenlijk werken de macro's daar niet meer. En uh, ja, dan gaan bedrijven dat gaan dat gewoon niet gebruiken. En uh, je moet een oplossing hebben die, waarbij, je, ja, waar, waarbij alles nog gewoon werkt. Ja, hetzelfde uh, probleem eigenlijk. Merk je uh, dat uh, onze boeven meegaan met hun tijd? Gebruiken ze meer IPv6 dan IPv4? Oeh. Nou, ik zie echt heel, bijna eigenlijk alleen maar IPv4. Ik denk wel dat ze de IPv6 kunnen, maar de, de grote jongens, zeg maar, die, uh, die doen dat wel. Maar ja, als ik zie wat ze gebruiken, gewoon zo'n IP-scanner en ze doen gewoon de, de, de ja, ze, ze hebben meer te maken met interne IP-adressen, zeg maar. En dat is, uh, ja, dat is, uh, daar kun je zoveel, ja, zoveel gebruiken als je maar wil, als het uh, in, op je LAN is, zeg maar. Dus, um, ja, te, ik, ik, heb, ik heb er nog niet gezien, ik heb er eerlijk gezegd nog niet van gezien, maar het zal me niet verbazen als dat gewoon ge, uh, gebruikt wordt, dat het gewoon gemeen goed is nou. nou. Wij overwegen om op sommige van onze stukken netwerk intern alleen maar IPv6 te gebruiken. En als er dan goed. IPv4, IPv4 gescand wordt, ja succes, want dat is er niet. Nou, dat klinkt een goed idee. Ik weet niet wat er nou weer gaat breken. <laughs> ja, dat zien we dan. <laughs> nou, transparant moeten zijn hè, voor de applicatie, dus ja. Mm -hmm. Maar goed, als je zelf de applicatie bouwt, dan kun je er zelf... Uh... Ja, bijna. Bijna. De, dat moet even... eigen offers maken. <laughs> Ja, ja. Als, je, als je alleen maar IPv6 gebruikt, dan uh, heb je wel wat paar adressen meer te scannen. Ja, dat is bijna net zoals uh, dat virtuele geheugen van uh, op 64 bit machines. Dat is veel lastiger om hem door te scannen dan uh, uh, ja, net zoals met IPv6. Ja. Van een 16 bit machine. Ja. Je kunt toch gewoon het netwerk vragen met IPv6 van wie allemaal even wil antwoorden. Dat is niet zo heel erg moeilijk. Maar het valt wel heel erg op. Uh, ja, je krijgt uh, even een burst over je netwerk van alle antwoorden, dat klopt. Uh, dus daar moet je op scannen. Dan moet je even op monitoren. Dat, uh... Ik had nog een mooie vraag over exfiltratie. Ja, ik vroeg me af hoe je dat in hemelsnaam zou kunnen afblokken. Want ik neem aan dat ze eerst exfiltreren, begreep ik volgens mij uit je presentatie, en dan pas gaan crypten. 
Dus ja, dan moet je mij net iets eerder uh, al blokken. En dat lijkt me eigenlijk een enorme klus. Ja, uh, ik heb toch wel misschien dat ze het andersom doen, want ze hebben toch de decryptiesleutel. Maar uh, uh, ja, dat is lastig. Dan, uh, 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 ja, er zijn wel, uh, je, hebt, je hebt wel oplossingen als data leak prevention, maar dan moet je helemaal configureren. En dan moet je hele organisatie moet op een bepaalde manier werken. En uh, nou ja, dat gaat gewoon niet gebeuren. Dat, uh, uh, dat is heel lastig. We hebben wel wat ideetjes daarvoor, om, uh, hoe je dat zou kunnen detecteren. Maar goed, dan... Uh, ja, ja, ik noem maar hard op. Uh, je mag niet uh, meer dan zoveel data in een archief gooien. Maar ja, ik heb, uh, het, kleinste, het kleinste archiefje wat ik heb gezien is, uh, is 5 gig. En de grootste wat ik heb gezien is 400 gig. Bij, uh, uh, maar goed, ik zag ik had screenshot aan boord. In mijn presentatie waarbij uh, uh, de Revel al 2 uh, terabyte uh, had geëxfiltreerd. Maar ja, heel veel data uh, overzetten. Ja, in principe zou je daar een uh, lock op moeten zetten. En dat... Je moet, je moet two-factor authentication op bestand access uh, zeg maar doen. Op, uh, op uh, quota, dat soort dingetjes. Of dat je ook maar een bepaalde hoeveelheid mag aanmaken. Dat zijn ook features die in het besturingssysteem al wel aanwezig zijn. Maar dat gebruikt niemand. Net zoals RDP brute forcing kun je ook gewoon aanzetten. Als je drie keer verkeerd inlogt, dan mag je een half uur niet inloggen bijvoorbeeld. Dat staat ook niet aan. Ja, set the vest to the rescue. ZFS tegenwoordig. Zet, ZFS op Windows. Dat klopt. Ja, en super. Linux. Hey, ik zie nog een vraag van Teus. Ik zal hem even voorlezen in de chat. Uh, technisch is dit een integrerende oorlogsvoering die alleen maar één winnaar kent. Geld flow naar de criminal. Kun je niet op hoger niveau uh, uh, namelijk de profit flow om zeep helpen? Ja, uh, <coughs> ben, ben eerst... Ben... De tweede slide, of de derde slide die ik heb, die zegt, nou, de, de verzekeringsmaatschappijen hebben de boel in handen in principe. En in, in de Verenigde Staten hebben ze het ook al verboden, is het al verboden dat je, uh, dat je de boeven gaat betalen. Maar goed, uh, Garmin heeft ook betaald en uh, dan moet je toestemming vragen van de overheid. Ja, als jij uh, een, uh, een bedrijf hebt met weet ik veel hoeveel werknemers en, je, en als je niet betaalt dan, uh, en dat anders de werknemers allemaal op straat komt te staan, ja. Er wordt echt wel gewoon betaald. Dat, uh... Ja, en die, uh, er wordt gewoon... Uh, ge, 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 uh, dus net zoals we inderdaad met de oorlogsvoering... er wordt gewoon geïnvesteerd in het uh, onderzoeken van, uh, uh, van security oplossingen... hoe je die kan bypassen. Hoe je, uh, hoe je de nieuwe exploit technieken eigen maakt. Hoe je, net zoals de zero logon uh, vulnerability... die uh, niet alleen Windows treft, maar ook andere... Die, uh, ja, dat is, uh, die, die hebben ze heel snel eigen gemaakt. En die worden dus ook gewoon gebruikt. En, maar, ja, en bedrijven zijn niet zo snel met patchen. Dus die... Uh, ja, ik weet niet hoe je die profijt flow zeep kan helpen. Dan zou je met z'n allen moeten afspreken, we gaan niet betalen. Maar ja, dan moeten we met z'n allen dus die, uh, uh, die klap opvangen. Of uh, dat de data weg is. Moet, eigenlijk moet je ervoor zorgen dat iedereen de, goede, de, de boel gewoon goed voor elkaar heeft. En, uh, dat is de basis. Ja, ja, je hebt, bedrijven hebben de basis niet op orde. En, uh... Ja. Maar dat is heel moeilijk. Want dan kom je met uh, het hele compliance verhaal aan. En uh, ja, je kan een... een een ISO 27001 of een NEN 7510 uh, stempeltje halen, zonder dat het daadwerkelijk veilig is. Ja, ja mag ik een cider uh, aflaat. Het is zelfs een, uh, dus volgens mij zelfs al uh, het... Sommige verzekeraars die hadden zelfs genoemd welke bedrijven zij als klant hebben. En dan ging de, ging de aanvaller gewoon dat lijstje langs. 
Dat is helemaal clever, ja. Hé, <laughs> hey, die, die gaan we even lastig vallen allemaal. Dus, uh, ja, bij bij Kenneth Quartz nemen ze de schade ook gewoon. Ja, ja, de, type... maar, maar zit je verdediging niet in um, hè, van als die uh, uh, malware partijen, hè, van die, die doen dat, omdat, omdat die data van die, die zij uh, uh, gijzelen dan wel uh, bemachtigen, ja, die heeft een bepaalde waarde voor ze. Uh, wat nou van als je je informatiemodel op een bepaalde manier uh, in elkaar steekt, dat eigenlijk die data uh, waardeloos is. Ja, dat zou handig zijn. Maar dan ben je nog steeds kwijt. Ja, ik ben nog steeds kwijt, dus dat kost je altijd. Ja, die moet je wel hebben in verband met brand. Maar, <laughs> ik ben niemand daar meer bang voor. Maar wat anders is, is dat die verzekeringsmaatschappijen hier ook belang bij hebben dat die blijft bestaan. Want we vangen de premie voor. Dus het is een simpele afweging. Ja, precies. Dat is ook het uh, probleem. Nee, die geest kan niet meer terug in de fles, uh, denk ik. Even één tegelijk. Eerst Ruben, dan Mark. Die geest kan uh, niet meer in de fles, uh, denk ik, wat betreft het uh, verdienmodel van de verzekeringsmaatschappijen. Uh, nee, dat denk ik ook niet. Nee. Dat is ook... Nou, ik vond het concept van, uh, van Ruben wel leuk. De cyber aflaat. Dat als je betaalt aan een, uh, aan een stelletje boeven, dat je dan hetzelfde bedrag aan uh, uh, zo'n club als uh, uh, de MIVD, uh, hey, die proberen om zeg maar, uh, um, uh, hoe heet dat ding? Zero days uh, te publiceren en, uh, uh, en mensen te waarschuwen tegen... Dat soort dingen, dat je datzelfde bedrag daaraan moet storten. Dat zou wel een mooie wetgeving zijn. NCSC. Ja, hoe heet die club nou? Die, die, uh, uh... NCSC. Nee, die bedoel ik niet. Ja. Oh, goed, de NCSC is ook goed. <laughs> Ergens. Ja, en... Maar dit is zo'n andere club... Met... Met de andere afkorting die daar blijkt. Waar ook. Uh, AIVD? Nee. Oh, het is een stichting. Waar uh, Astrid in zit. Oh. Onderzoek. Ja. 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 Hoe heet dat? DIVD. Oh, van. Uh, ja. Ja, maar die doen Responsible Disclosure. Ja, precies. Die. Ja. Ah. Ja, ik ben niet zo goed in afkorting, maar dat weet iedereen gelukkig. Um, we hebben nog uh, vijf minuten in het officiële gedeelte. Heeft iemand anders nog een vraag? <tie> 